<laughs> That's right. The Pittsburgh Steelers behind the NFL's best kicker, Chris Boswell, defeat the Baltimore Ravens 18-16, once again proving a giant fact that's been true ever since the two-time MVP Lamar Jackson has came into the league, and that's Pittsburgh and Mike Tomlin own that man. Let's go talk about the first place in the AFC North, Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, so yes. I am not wearing a jersey. This is a little bit later than maybe the game was expecting because I had to go do some professional type stuff with my job. But that didn't stop me from wearing my Sunday polo, my Sunday best, listening to the game in with the ear, catching the video whenever I can, and enjoying, enjoying what we all knew as Steelers fans, which is that we were going to win this game, we're going to move to 8-2, and and that we are going to become a game and a half, two games, almost three games ahead in the division against the Baltimore Ravens. Why? Because... Eight out of the last nine times we've played the Ravens, we beat them, and that was with quarterbacks like Delvin Hodges. That's with quarterbacks like Mason Rudolph, Mitch Trubisky, Kenny Pickett. It's like even injured old Ben Roethlisberger. This is a well, this is the best rivalry in the NFL because the games are always one score close. Games are physical; they're back and forth. But we just own them, and Lamar, Lamar. I, I, I got a secret for you all. Lamar has a dad in the NHL. Want, want, want me to show you who his dad is? Okay, wait, wait, wait. One second. Let's go. A big clap. That's right. Mike Tomlin. Mike T. Coach Tomlin. Never had a losing season. Mike Tomlin is Lamar's daddy and you see it every time they play the way the Steelers were able to frustrate Lamar have him throw bad plays have him be antsy in the pocket have him do things that you don't see him anywhere any other team do is a testament to Mike Tomlin's coaching and understanding how to handle Lamar as a threat and nothing changed here that game Lamar barely had over 200 yards passing he had one touchdown late in the game which did make things a little interesting but, again, he couldn't get that two-point conversion. He got stopped there. And he had one interception from a great interception from um, Wilson from the Steelers. Holy smokes, he just stole that ball away from the Ravens player. And, yeah, Lamar looked like he usually does against us, which is basic, not special, flawed, and kind of terrible. Which is why every time Steeler fans are like, why are you guys all calling Lamar MVP? Because when he plays versus us, he looks like absolute dog poo. And once again, he looks like absolute dog poo. It's just a testament to the Steelers and how they're able to handle Lamar, how they're able to keep him off kilter. He does make some running plays this game. He did have a little bit better passing game than he usually does. But the man just... Kit, we have the recipe. We we only rush four. We don't blitz all that often. And because he doesn't get that first read in coverage, he starts panicking when people like Cameron Hayward, Nick Herbig, TJ Watt, and others get to him in the backfield. And it causes him to make just bad throws and bad decision making while having an immense amount of secondary there overall. We also, outside of one drive, pretty much stopped Derrick Henry, the NFL's leading rusher, pretty you know still. Um, the defense up front with the rushing attack looked great. It makes me very hopeful for the rest of the season when we play teams like the Eagles and the Chiefs that we'll be able to win those games too. Chiefs, who as I'm recording, just lost to Buffalo. So Pittsburgh now controls their faith. I don't expect them to win out. Just like I don't think I expect any team in the NFL right now to win out. But if they were to win out, Pittsburgh would be the number one seed in the AFC, which means everybody's going to AccuSure Stadium. Um, I liked it better when it was just called Heinz Field, but you know, we'll take what we need to take. Gotta wave the towel. That's like a law of Steeler football. You pick up a terrible towel, you gotta wave that terrible towel. But it was such an impressive game defensively, and the Steelers kept them in 
a pretty dominating winning position throughout. Offensively, we need to convert red zone plays. We had six field goals this game. Chris Boswell, let's put Chris Boswell on the screen. This man is the NFL's best kicker. He is now like... 27 of 28 for the whole entire season, hitting a 50, multiple 50 plus yard kicks today at Heinz Field. Six for six. The second game this year, he's won a game with six field goals, being all the Steelers' points. But he is just a rock solid kicker, which was not true today of the Ravens with Justin Tucker, who missed two ones early. Again, showing that maybe as his career is coming to an end here soon. Tucker's a little bit rocking, and Boswell has now become the NFL's pristine best kicker. I just don't know what to say, though, when we have to get six field goals to win this game when we were in the red zone like four times. Credit to Baltimore's defense. They were playing a lot better press coverage. They were maybe getting, you know, both teams were very physical on pass plays, and Baltimore played that well. Um, but we need to find ways to get Justin Fields in the game inside the red zone. Need fi- to find ways to allow the running game to push themselves into the end zone against some of these top teams. Because 18 points work today. It might not work in the future. We needed to get touchdowns for the amount of times we were in the red zone this game. And finally, turnovers. Two big fumble you know, plays against Derrick Henry and against the Ravens before the end of the half. That amazing interception. The Pittsburgh Steelers turned the ball over and made the most out of all those turnovers. I believe getting field goals on every single turnover we got. Now, we did have one bad interception by Russ in the red zone inside the 10 on a very bad floater ball that kind of kept the Baltimore team in the game. But... The Steelers came on a mission today. Patrick Queen, a former Ravens star, went on a mission today. And that was to prove to everybody out there, everybody in their power rankings, everybody on the stupid shows, that the Pittsburgh Steelers are Super Bowl contenders. The Pittsburgh Steelers are a real team to contend with. And that we are, once again, better than the Baltimore Ravens. And you need to stop saying the Ravens are the Super Bowl contender team from the AFC North because they're not. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers, and if Baltimore wants to get to the Super Bowl, it's very likely they'll have to go through Pittsburgh. And like I just said, eight out of the last nine games against the Steelers, the Steelers have beat Baltimore. So we're riding high. Nice to see Fields a little bit in the action here. I hope we get to see more of him as the season moves on. We play Thursday night against the Cleveland Browns, who got beat pretty hard by the Saints today. So this is a trap game. This is like the normal game I can see the Steelers losing in any season when they're up. But we we beat the, the Browns. Mike Tomlin secures another winning season. We move to 9-2. and two, And then we start hitting the Bengals, the Ravens again, the Chiefs, the Eagles, um, and obviously the Bengals that end the season. And we can really start pushing ourselves towards the top of the NFL and the top of the AFC. But it was a huge, huge win today. It's always great when we beat Baltimore, but it's becoming to the point now where it's expected. And it's about the damn time. Everybody around the NFL realizes we own the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson, we own Lamar Jackson. We own John Harbaugh. We are the daddy. They are our out-of-place sons that get loud and abrasive and people like them. But at the end of the day, they come home and daddy puts them in their place. See you after the Browns game Thursday night. Here we go.